was up? What's up, people? We have Kendall, Marlena, Kate. Uh, I see some people who have come back to the live. Um, I hope that you guys is that you guys are learning stuff from my lives. Um, today we're gonna go over kind of something like. People don't normally want to train this necessarily just because it is like, it's kind of boring, I would say, but super, super important. When I was injured and I had my injuries, I wasn't able to train. So all I could do was mental training. I had to do mental toughness. I had to work on my mental game. And I think that's one of the reasons why I got so good at competing because I was training my brain your brain is like the biggest um i think that one of the strongest muscles in your body or let's just say an important muscle in your body that you actually want to train your brain even if you're not doing gymnastics necessarily this is like going to train your mind hello lucy gina ruby bq rena um madman what's up Oh my gosh, welcome, welcome. So if you guys wanna grab a piece of paper or a pencil or a pen or anything, if you guys wanna write this down, don't worry, this will be posted later so that you can rewatch it again. But we're going to, um, I don't, we don't really need to warm up for this because there's not, um, we're not gonna do like exercising per se. We're gonna, I'm gonna tell you the secrets of what I did when I wasn't training and how I got my mental game so strong. And so, you know, when you go into practice, you go to practice and you kind of just like do all the work. Like your coach says, oh, do five cartwheels and you do five cartwheels and all that stuff. You don't actually like take the time to sit there and then train yourself, like train your brain. So gymnast queen 87 asked, what is the strongest mental block you've ever had? I think my strongest mental block was not believing in myself and almost psyching myself out when I was competing. Um, I've also had the twisties, which is like when you're twisting and you have no idea where you are. Like I've done skills where I literally am like so lost. I just don't know where I am. So then I just freak out and all that stuff. And then when I go into competition, I think about all the bad things. So a big mental block of mine was when I was competing because I would think, oh, I did this skill this way three days ago. I fell on this side of the beam. So that means I need to like overcompensate and go on the other side of the beam, which is not right. Every day is different. And I really truly think the best gymnasts and the best athletes in the world, not even gymnasts, the best athletes in the world know how to adjust and know how to compete in different situations. Okay, let's see. How can you get rid of mental blocks? And I get them so bad. I, so mental blocks for me, um, I always had to think positively. And let's just say for me, um, I had to accept that in the moment, I am living in the moment. So you want to almost think when I thought about mental blocks, I had to think of one word. So we're going to go through an exercise, which literally we are going to say one word for about um, 30 seconds. Cause we're going to start off small and I have my timer here. We're going to do 30 seconds of saying one word. That word could be, um, happy. That word could be smile. Um, that word could be breathe. When I was competing, smile was a big word that I used. smile and breathe. Because a lot of the times I would find myself like rushing when I was competing or like my heart pounding so much that all my focus would be on my heart. And I could not think of anything that would do one word. So we're going to do this exercise and we're going to say one word for 30 seconds. Normally you want to say it in your head, but at this time too, it's good to say it out loud. So you know what it sounds like. And I don't want you to think of anything else. Like we're going to like mute everything. I'm going to push this down a little bit. We're going to mute all of our thoughts and we're just going to say the one word, my word for today. I think I'm going to pick smile and I'm going to say smile because I just want you to like close your eyes, really feel the word and say it out loud. <laughs> if you're in like a family situation and you got parents there and stuff and like your siblings, whatever they can, whatever you just say, yo, I'm working 
on my mental toughness. I'm working on my mental game. Don't distract me. Let me do my thing. It's kind of like you doing an ab circuit. You're doing a mind circuit. So we're going to do this. Um, an important word in my routine, a word you could, again, breathe, happy. You could say um, tight because you want to stay tight in your routine, like squeeze. Um, any word that you really like that takes you to a nice place. Smile is one of mine because it just automatically makes me want to smile. So ready? We're going to close our eyes and we're going to say this one word for 30 seconds. Ready? Go. Smile. 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 Okay. That was 30 seconds. It felt like a lot longer than 30 seconds. Um, all, it was weird because when I was thinking, I was almost thinking about like how smile sounds so weird after I say it more than two times. Um, we're going to do a different exercise and we're actually going to stand up, move around. And I almost want you, we're going to do something like a really simple exercise and we're going to practice multitasking, but saying one word. So we're going to do, oh, everybody stand up and we're going to do this thing for 30 seconds again. I almost want um, us to just walk on toe. And the reason why I say walk on toe is because it could be a balancing thing that you're having a hard time doing, or we're going to do... Um, a one-legged balance. So you're just going to, if you can't go on toe, go on one leg. Instead of walking, I'm going to make it more challenging. You're going to go on toe, and you're going to say that same word for 30 seconds as you're going on toe. This is to get your mind distracted from what you're actually doing and letting your body take over. If you are falling, you still say smile, 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 and with your eyes closed, because I want you to focus on just that one word you're doing. It's really great work for beam because I feel like beam is a whole balancing act. So we're gonna do this again for 30 seconds and you're gonna say that one word while you're balancing on whatever leg you want to. Ready? All right, we're gonna go in five, four, three, two, one. Smile, smile, smile. Smile, 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 um, so <laughs> I actually, I, um, I would love to know what you guys were thinking while you were doing that exercise, because my mind would go to that ah, dang, I'm losing my balance. I got to like rebalance myself. But once I said the word smile continuously over again, you're not thinking about so much your body motion. You're thinking about that one word. This is going to get you out of your head, especially if you're on beam or in everyday life and you're falling or something's going off, you're just bringing it back to that one word that you really, really enjoyed. Um, I'm curious, I hope you guys put in the comments below what you guys felt in that exercise. Um, it really helped me because my mind goes everywhere. It's like, it now sounds weird after I say it five million times. Um, another cool thing for beam, or um, we're gonna focus on beam mental imagery. But I also, this is where it's going to be fun because we're going to do a little bit of tricks. Um, I want you guys to pick your favorite skill that you can safely do at home, whether that be a handstand step down, whether that be a cartwheel or however you want to. I'm going to pick a cartwheel because I just think um, it's safe to do at home at my home. I want you guys to be safe while you're doing this. And I want you guys to do it once and just kind of do it. So we're just going to do a cartwheel. Hopefully I have enough space, I don't kick anything. And we're going to do 
Just something really simple. All right, so we do a plane cartwheel. Whatever skill you want, it could just be a jump in the air. It could be whatever you want. Um, now I want you to do that exact same skill, but really feel every single muscle that you're squeezing and that you're using for that particular skill. So I'm gonna do the cartwheel again, and I'm gonna tell you what I felt in that skill. Ready? Cartwheel. So I feel my abs squeezing, I felt my feet push down to the ground, and I felt my arms squeezing really hard at the end. Now, here's the fun part. Okay, so I want you to do a cartwheel, but not actually do the cartwheel, and do it in your head. That doesn't mean sit down. I'm going to show you how I do mental imagery, because have you ever had those moments where you sit, they tell you to do mental imagery, you close your eyes, and you're like, why am I falling? I can't do the skill. I crotch the beam. Like everything is just going to blah. Like I, I just can't close my eyes and do mental imagery that way. It's just not me. Um, it works for some people. Some people can sit there, really envision themselves doing the skill. But this is how I do mental imagery. And this really helped me when I was injured, when I had to be away from the gym for like months at a time. Um, at my last year at UCLA, fun fact. I did not train every single day, guys. I did one beam routine a week, and that was in competition. My body couldn't handle it anymore, so I would do tons and tons and tons of mental imagery sets. So remember that cartwheel, that skill that you just did. Remember all those muscles you used. We're going to now do it, but not actually doing it. So I'm going to show you what I mean. This is how I would do mental imagery. Tight here, here cartwheel, and then Y. That's how I want you to do it. I want you to do as if you're doing this. Um, I like to use my hands. So a cartwheel for me would be like here, and then I would go hands, and then Y. Like I don't actually do the skill, but you're practicing as if you're doing it. For beam, especially, if you just get a, a line or like tape or um, just anything that's straight, uh, it could be clothes that you just kind of like lined up, then you can pretend that's the beam and really pretend you're on the beam. So this is actually you practicing. You could tell your coach, um, yeah, I practiced beam at home because I did so many mental imagery sets that this is actually training your brain. Your brain doesn't know, um, I think it doesn't know the difference. I was told this by a psychologist, so correct me if I'm wrong, but they told me your brain doesn't know the difference when you're actually doing the skill or when you're thinking about doing the skill. This really activates my brain to think I'm doing it. So again, let's try a cartwheel without doing it, but actually like pretending we're doing it. So up here and then cartwheel and then tight. My cartwheel was perfect. I don't know about you guys. My cartwheel was great. So the reason why I like to get up, do the motion, is because when I sit there and close my eyes, I have a hard time picturing myself doing it perfectly. But if I act like I'm doing it perfectly, my body is like squeezing all those muscles as if I'm doing it. So we're going to do another drill. It's going to be a handstand step down, like you're doing a back handspring, a back walkover, or any skill that you think of. Um, so I'm just going to go up to a handstand and step down, and again, tell you what muscles I felt. So, so I felt, when I was in a handstand, my hands pushed down into the ground, and me stepping down and finishing really strong. So this is what, I'm going to talk you through this, this is what it's going to feel like if I were to do mental imagery for a handstand step down and not actually do the skill. So I would go starting my in my starting position because it's still standing in my starting position, handstand up here and I'm pushing as if I'm pushing in a handstand, step down and then end. So you're breaking up the parts of what your body is feeling for every single section. If you are say doing a jump on the beam and say you're doing like a whole split jump and whatever, then you are going to do as if you're jumping, jump up, down, and land. So you're using all those muscles similarly 
as if you're doing beam routine. I'm gonna show you what it looked like when I did mental imagery sets for my beam routine um, at UCLA, because it's more simple. So if I was warming up and I wasn't able to touch the beam, I had a concrete floor, um, kind of similar to home, like you don't have all the equipment, and I was getting ready to do a beam routine, this is what my beam routine would look like, and I'm gonna talk you through what I did. So I would stand here, pretend I'm getting on the beam, take a deep breath, and this is for my flares. So then I pretend to jump, and then I go one, two, three, and then end my flares. So that's like what it would look like. I'm doing perfect flares in my head. The more you do this, the more times you do this perfectly in your head, the easier and less scary beam is going to be because your brain is automatically going to know like that you've done it so many times. And then you can start simplifying and use that one word process that we did at the beginning. So I'm doing my flares here, kind of my dance, and I'm doing it like totally all out. My spin double, I would go here, up, and then hop, split, down. So I'm as I'm doing this, it may look simple. I am squeezing my muscles so hard as if I'm doing the skill because you want to teach your muscles in your brain to do it at the same time. So that was my spin double kick split jump. We're going to do my, um, my, uh, acro series, which was a back handspring back pipe. Again, I like to use my hands and you'll see why. So I went here and I prepped for my back handspring. I'm squeezing super, super hard. Then I'm going to go back handspring, look at my feet up tight land and then finish my skill. So I did this because that would translate when I actually did it to train my brain to do every single thing perfectly. So we're gonna do that acro series one more time, just in case you have an acro series and you wanna get better at it. So I do my first dance, step here, prep for my back handspring, squeeze really tight, doing back handspring, see my back foot go up and down and stick. And I landed it perfectly. Um, for my dismount, dismounts are really important for me because I couldn't do them every single weekend because of my knee. So I always had to do a mental imagery set for my dismount during practice. And my dismount in um, UC at UCLA was an aerial full. So this is what it would look like <laughs> if I was on the beam, um, my mental imagery set. So I set up for my dismount, push up, kick, aerial, and then full land stick. And then end. You always wanna make sure you finish your skill and sorry, you start your skill properly and you finish your skill properly. Because yes, you can do the skill perfectly in the air, but the skill starts at the very beginning when you present and the very end when you stick or when you dance out of it. So it's fun to pick a pose. Any pose you want, I suggest doing a pose before and after while you're doing your mental imagery sets for me. So again, my aerial full would look like here, up, and then I would kick, squeeze my muscles so tight, pretend I'm doing an aerial, look at my back foot because I always look at my back foot before I jump, look at my back foot, set up really high, twist, and land, present. That's how I would do my mental imagery sets for beam. Um, I hope this really helped you, and I hope that when you do go back into the gym, you're so mentally strong for balance beam. Who does not like balance beam? Um, I see a lot of people saying like, how do you get over fears of skills? We're focusing on beam today. So how do you get over things, fears of skills on beam? This is such a great exercise because you're not doing the skill, you're training your brain and you're really thinking about doing the skill and thinking about all those muscles. So say if I had a fear of going backwards and I was so scared to do a back handspring. Um, it's scarier to do the skill, but sometimes you need a day or like a week to just chill out, don't do the skill, do this like multiple, multiple times in your head. It doesn't take that long, even if you want like a break, just say, okay, I'm doing back handspring, here, up, and then see your back foot land, so that you're doing it as if you're doing the skill, and it's gonna help you so much. Like, I kid you not, 
this literally was the key to my mental imagery for beam and we are going to go through all the different events because i really think all the different events there's different tricks like bars i use my hands a ton like you can't really do like handstand step downs for like um for bars or like you can't like physically do it so when i would go it's really good to kind of give you guys more inside things that I've learned from sports psychologists or things that have really helped me. Um, when you guys are able to go back into the gym, even walking on the beam, like just literally stand there, walk on the beam, you be one with the beam um, helps out a lot for you to build a better relationship with that event. And now since you're at home, you can put a line out on the floor walk as if you're walking on the beam do a cartwheel as if you're on the beam and if, if you're not in a safe environment don't do the skills but remember you can do them in your head thousands and thousands of times and do them in a way where you are doing them perfectly um you could again do a cartwheel if you want to break it up do the beginning of the cartwheel then do a handstand step down to finish your end again always start and finish your skills so that is my biggest recommendation um i would love to talk to you guys you know individually i do um private sessions uh when, when this whole thing is over uh, i i really like helping um people with just fine tuning their abilities and not everyone's going to be the same so i want everyone to really fine tune their own personal talents um how do you calm your nerves that exercise that we did at the beginning, saying that one word, mine was breathe. Whenever I was nervous, I would have to say breathe, breathe, breathe. Because if I thought, okay, breathe, you're nervous. Like, don't be nervous. Like, if I thought of way too many things, that would make me more nervous. And then I would think about, oh, my gosh, my heart rate's, like, beating so fast. Oh, my gosh, my stomach's turning. Like, it would just roll into a bunch of, like, other things. So um, it really helped me when I was nervous to just say, Okay, breathe. And then I would breathe like as I'm saying the word. So I hope that this helps you think about that one word that makes you happy, that really um, that you think you can like go to when you're overthinking and skills. Um, I hope you guys can do your more mental imagery sets. And trust me, I like trust me. I took a full year off gymnastics. I've said this multiple times. Uh, and this was the one thing I could do was mental imagery sets. And I honestly, if you ask a lot of athletes, mental imagery is the key because you don't practice that in the gym as much. You practice it at home. And so I hope that you guys can um, practice this while you're at home. Take this time. This is the perfect time to get better at your mental imagery sets. Talk to a friend, send your teammates, be like, yo, let's do a mental imagery set to show them your mental imagery set of how they, how you do it. And then they can do their routine and kind of just cheer each other on and just say, Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like, that's awesome that you guys are doing those mental imageries. Um, Oh, how do you contact me? My email is, um, at, uh, no, peng peng C Lee at gmail.com. So you can always email me. We can talk about sessions. Um, those are uh, cost se sessions. So hopefully maybe in the near future that I can like privately work with you. Um, even if it's over the phone, that would be awesome. But um, yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this. It's um, not a physical activity. It's more mental activity, but very, very important. But I hope to see you guys soon. Um, I do this Monday to Friday at 2 p.m. PST and 5 p.m. EST. I love you all so much. And I want you guys to get better every single day. Just think about your win for the day. You were really proud of today. I'm really proud that I got to connect with you guys. And I can't wait to connect with you on Monday. Bye.